Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and today I'm going to be showing you what the summer sky looks like. So as of right now, I have, I'm have using Stellarium and I have it set to Yonkers. So this is kind of the general area that the museum's in, so this is kind of the local night sky. And if you're using Stellarium, um, I'm going to leave the atmosphere on because it gives a little bit of a more realistic look of what the night sky is going to be like. I'm going to point out some brighter objects so that these are all things that you might be able to see from your backyard. So right now I have the sky set to about 9.30 and there's a few things you're going to want to look for right off the bat. First thing you're going to want to look for because it's going to help orient you in the night sky is right here. This is the Big Dipper, which is part of the greater constellation, and let me turn on these constellations, Ursa Major. So we have the Great Bear right here, and then if we go from this little stick here, so this star here, which is named Merak, and if you go to this star here, which is named Doobie, and you kind of follow this path through, we're going to get to this star right here named Polaris. Now Polaris is our North Star, which means that it's kind of at the tip of Earth's axis. So the Earth spins around itself, so kind of imagine you spin a basketball around on your finger. The way that basketball spins is the way that the Earth and all planetary objects and everything in space rotates. It all rotates around itself. And Earth's axis is extending straight through up into the night sky and is pointing right towards Polaris. So as we talk about the night sky and the video goes on, keep an eye on where Polaris is and where everything else is because Polaris isn't going to move. And this is part of Ursa Minor, or the little bear. You can turn on these constellation labels. These are what the constellations look like. So here we have the great bear and the little bear. Now we can do some more star hopping from Ursa Major. So if we go from this star all the way at the end of the handle of the Big Dipper, and we kind of follow it down, we're going to get to this star here, Arcturus. And Arcturus is part of the constellation Boots. And this is a hunter. So we have Ursa Major, you should be able to see that prettily, pretty easily from your night sky. We have Ursa Minor, which should be relatively easy to spot. Now I'm going to point out an asterism. Now an asterism isn't like a constellation, right? So a constellation is a standard group of stars in the night sky that makes up a specific shape. These constellations, of which there are 88 formalized ones, most of them are ancient. Most of them have been around since ancient Greece and Rome, so they have stories and myths attached to them. They have pretty standard pictures to them, so I'll pull up the Stellarium ones as well. There's kind of a generic picture attached to constellations, um, but there's no right or wrong way to draw Ursa Major. As long as you have kind of a bear image, there's no wrong or right way to draw it. It's very much open to interpretation. And scientists use these formal constellations, again of which there are 88, to designate certain areas of the night sky. Asterisms, on the other hand, you can think of as more colloquial, right? So amateur stargazers will use them because they're very simple shapes made up of incredibly bright stars in the night sky and it helps orient you in the night sky and figure out where you are. So let's say you walk out onto your back porch and for whatever reason, even though she's usually pretty easy to spot, you can't find Earth's major. You just can't find her. Well, you're going to want to look for three very bright stars. As soon as the sun sets, in all honesty, you should be able to see this star right here, Vega. Vega is the brightest star in our night sky. Another incredibly bright star is Deneb right here and Altair. These three bright stars make up the summer triangle. And this is an asterism. So again, it's not a constellation, it's not a formalized thing. And you'll notice that each of these stars, so Vega is in Lyra, Deneb is in Cygnus, and Altair is in Aquila. Each of these is in a different constellation, but they're part of the same asterism. So again, these are three bright stars that you should be able to spot, and from each of these we have a different constellation. Now con uh, Cygnus is a swan, Lyra is a harp, and Aquila 
is a vulture. I've also seen Aquila depicted as Prometheus. So the story of Prometheus is that he snuck down into the underworld. So this is an ancient Greek myth. He snuck down into the underworld and he stole fire from the underworld to give to the humans. And depending on what myth you look at, the reasons are a little varied. But no matter the reason for this, no matter the motivation, this angered the gods of ancient Greece. And so what they did is they tied Prometheus to a rock, and every day a bird ate his liver, and every night the liver would grow back. So sometimes this constellation is depicted as Prometheus himself, but with Solarium we can see that it's depicted as one of the vultures that ate his liver. Another constellation to look for is Hercules. Hercules is going to be pretty easy to spot um, in that Vega is right next to it. So if you could spot the brightest star in the night sky right here, which is Vega, Hercules is going to be right next to it. Another way to imagine it in your mind is that once you go from Ursa Major and we find Arcturus, and which is in Boots, you can kind of think as Hercules as between Lyra and Boots, so that might help you find Hercules. You're going to want to look for these four stars right here that kind of make up this rhombus shape of his body. He's a little faint, but you should be able to spot him. Now these are all constellations, so let's move over to zodiacs. The zodiacs in our night sky are going to loop around this belt here. This belt is called the ecliptic, and the ecliptic is just the apparent path of all of the celestial bodies in our night sky. It's basically what this means, that all of the planets, their orbits, lie along the ecliptic, which happens to pass through the zodiacs. That's why the zodiacs historically are considered to be special. They're really just standard constellations, but throughout all of history, not just ancient history, even modern, certain people think that there is some significance to what planet is in what, what zodiac at a certain time. Now, early in the summer evening, especially in June and early, early July, you're going to be able to see Leo the lion, and you're going to want to find it with this backwards question mark. The brightest star in Leo is Regulus. And another way you could think of finding this is if you find Ursa Major and you kind of just go down from there. You can loop along this ecliptic and you're going to find all of the zodiacs. And what's great about the zodiacs is that once you find them, they're all more or less right next to each other. Now I'm going to speed up the night sky just a little bit. Oh, just another thing to point out. If you're somewhere that's really high up and you can see the, the um, horizon relatively well, you might be able to catch a glimpse of Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia looks like a W in the night sky. Depending on where you are, if you're high up, you might be able to see her. Um, you're, she's out all night for the most part. But if you can't see the horizon, you might have a little bit of a hard time seeing her unless it's really early in the morning. Now, throughout the summer months, and especially the further we get into July and August, the earlier they're going to be out, you're going to see Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn are incredibly bright and they're going to be very easy to spot. Now, they were in Sagittarius in spring and so now they're moving out from Sagittarius towards Capricorn and eventually Aquarius so they're moving from west to east in this image so we have Jupiter here Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and then we have Saturn which is the second biggest planet in our solar system and if you look at these through any kind of binoculars or telescope with Jupiter, you're going to be able to see its four biggest moons. So these are the four Galilean moons. You're going to be able to spot Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. And they're going to look like four bright dots surrounding Jupiter. And depending on how long you look at Jupiter, you might be able to see a few of them moving just slightly. And with Saturn, if you look at Saturn through binoculars or a telescope, you're going to be able to see its rings. 
Now in June, you're gonna have to be up about 11, 11.30, they'll be start to be visible. But as we get into July, especially August, they're gonna be visible earlier and earlier. So 10.30 right after sun to right after sunset. Now as the night goes on, you're gonna be able to see some more constellations and ones that you might be able to see a little bit better in the fall. So we have Pegasus here, the winged horse, with these four bright stars right here. And this is another asterism. This is actually called the, the Great Square. So again, we have a triangle right here. So one, two, three. We've got this triangle here. And then we've got the Great Square here. So two asterisms. And there's a whole slew of things going on in Pegasus right down here. So between his head and his feet, we have something called Pegasi 51. And this you're not going to be able to see with the naked eye, but it's kind of cool to just know where it is. Pegasi 51 is the first exoplanet ever discovered. So an exoplanet is just a planet that orbits a sun that's outside of our solar system. So this in this kind of just general area, that's where it was first spotted. And then there's also a star cluster in this area as well. Now, Mars is going to be out early in the morning. And again, as we get further into July and August, you're gonna be able to see Mars closer to midnight. But right now in June, it's gonna rise right around 3 a.m. ish. And our moon, depending on what time of the month it is, the moon's gonna be visible at different times. So we just had a full moon, which was on June 5th. Our next full moon is going to be on July 5th. And then there's going to be another full moon in August, of course, on August 3rd. And so on those days, we're going to have the moon basically visible all night, and then the closer it gets to the new moon, the less you're gonna be able to see of it. And then our sun is going to rise bright and early, earlier and earlier. Um, and right at sunrise, right before sunrise, you might be able to catch a glimpse of Venus. So you can kind of see her right here. She's coming up over the horizon. So if we're gonna be able to see Venus right before sunrise. So if you love planets, some of the easiest ones to spot, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus are all gonna be out throughout the summer months. And Mars is gonna be right around Aquarius right here. And then the sun's gonna rise, and that's what you can see in the summer months. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more stuff from the Hudson River Museum.